Okay, just about to glue on the 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 uh, the lid for the mass step box. I sanded the tops of these so there's no paint on there. Put some Type on three on there, and I'm gonna clamp it in place. I'm about to put the primer on the outside. I taped up the uh, the keel and the uh, the nose guard basically, and I'm gonna leave those natural wood. I sanded with 320 everywhere, and uh, now I'm gonna scrub it with this. Uh, I'm gonna try to get the indentations that that are still shiny. All right, there's the rather ugly uh, cold gray primer on the boat. Okay, I sanded the primer. I sanded all the, the bumps. The This side actually looks pretty good. It's uh, the other side, of course. Uh, these are the ripple, ripple areas on the other side. I sanded with 320. And ready to spray. Hey, I'm using uh, it's interior, exterior, waterborne acrylic urethane. Uh, and it's designed for, for spray guns, so and it's going to be that color. This stuff uh, dries in about 15 minutes, uh, but I'm going to let it dry for 25 and then I'm going to lightly sand it again and put on a thin top coat. So the last time I used this paint, I used the satin. I didn't use the gloss and uh, it's drying a lot slower than normal. I think um, I put too much paint on, especially on the sides. It looks like it's dripping. Yeah, I'm gonna have to let it completely dry overnight and then sand and then put the, uh, put the, yeah, there's dripping over there. That looks awful. Yeah, so I gotta let it completely dry, sand, and then put a light coat on tomorrow. Okay, I sanded this uh, side of the hull and I angled it so now uh, it's not going to have a tendency to drip so much and uh, I'm going to repaint it. All right, this uh, turned out a whole lot better. Um, it's still pretty uh, rough in certain areas, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to be an expert in finishing a boat. <laughs> uh, my expertise is in building stuff, but not finishing. I think it'll still be fast. Okay, this is the last skimmer, uh, hydroplaning foil, basically, that I tested last summer. And um, I noticed that these, these, um, these rails on the edges... Um, we're causing a little bit of drag, so I'm gonna trim them down. I don't wanna eliminate them completely, but I want to reduce them significantly. So I constructed this special router bit. It has a oversized bearing on the top and it's gonna cut it down. So whatever that distance is, quarter inch or so, that's how big this will be. Because right now it's over an inch. It's about 30. Okay, there is the smaller shoulder. Okay, so the reason I am using this foil again is because uh, it got up to 12 miles an hour. Uh, 
uh, which is slightly higher than the, uh, the skimming disc, the elliptical discs. And uh, this actually did go underwater once uh, when there was a big gust in big waves and the skimmer uh, rose back out of the water within three seconds by itself. See the biggest waves are there. Oh shit! Without me loosening the main sheet. My hand wasn't even on the main sheet and it was cleated. So, uh, so even though this went out of water, it uh, self-righted. Um, uh, the other reason that I like it is it's symmetrical. So it has slight curvature on the top and bottom, uh, but it is a wedge shape and it doesn't want to turn um, downward at the nose because it's symmetrical. So it's almost like, uh, I don't know, if, 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 if you studied bullets that go underwater, there are uh, bullets that travel, are designed to travel farther underwater, and they kind of have more of a shape like this, um, uh, except they do have a blunt tip that's, um, that causes the, the water to shoot this way and shoot that way um, at a uh, 60 degree angle, uh, creating an air bubble. Uh, that's the only thing I haven't incorporated, but... Um, well, these are the two skimmer shapes that I will be testing next. Basically, the one on the bottom is a truncated airfoil, and the one on the top is a arc-shaped um, wedge. I have tested the top one, and it, it got up, it did quite well, and I haven't tested the bottom one. This is going to be brand new for this summer. Um, the key difference is, um, number one, they're both symmetric, so you can spin it around its... Um, axis and, and it's the same shape uh, but the, the key difference is the width the, the difference between the two angles at the transom um, the the airfoil the reason it's truncated is because if I made it a true airfoil the the lift would um, increase like three times instantaneously if it went underwater and that is just too much of an increase. I think that would break my crossbar. So instead, the, the angle of incidence actually goes from four degrees to eight degrees, and so it just doubles. And so it's a, it's a di big difference between doubling and tripling uh, the force, instantaneous force on a crossbar. Um, so that's, that's why I designed it this way. It was the same thing on the other side. There were drips, I had the sand. Using a Wagner power sprayer. Very simple. All right, I really like this um, walnut and green color. Walnut goes really well with black, white, light green, and light blue. And I've already done a blue boat, so I decided to do a green boat. Okay, I took the tape off of the, uh, the keel and the, the nose guard. The keel looks a lot better. It, it has um, a final coat of epoxy on it. I don't have to do anything to that except put some marine varnish on it uh, to keep the UV light from breaking it down when it's upside down in my backyard or something. Um, but I'll probably try to keep this indoors when I'm not on the water. All right, there was some overspray that got past my tape. I'm going to try to wet sand it with an 800 grit stone. This is what I use to sharpen chisels and stuff. It's a wet stone.